Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to uh, all the new people who've joined in since um, over the last couple of weeks. The since I posted the last coop video, um, the channel has grown quite well. Uh, the video seems to have been shared a lot. I think uh, the last two weeks it's had ten thousand views, which is just for me is just mind blowing. Um, compared to the truck out there, which is sitting on about eight hundred and something views, but uh, that's cool. Um, this was meant to be a truck video, but um, I've been working on the back end on that, and it's a public holiday, Easter, and I've run out of gas for the welder, so it's not quite where I want it to be, so I'm putting the hold on that. Back to this thing, the coupe, the cool car that everyone seems to be interested in. If you look behind me, hey, we've got a new banner from uh, Driving with Dixon, Charlie Dixon, his channel. Check that out, buy some of those, they're cool lads. And behind me here, they have a list. And that's for this. So let's get started. give you um, I'll have a quick read through this and then uh, I'll compare this one with what's on here well, I'll start with um, the government list um, so based upon the data supplied by you the construction proposed to be carried out to the above vehicle namely fitting a twin turbo V8 uh, 9 inch with floating hubs fall in through suspension coilovers and subframe connectors and mini tubs so these will be acceptable to this office subject to the following conditions. Work is carried out exactly as so it's done properly, meets all the road rules for the uh, vehicle. Vehicle's lighting is all good. The brake master cylinder matches the rear, front and rear calipers, that's all compatible. Um, the right brake balance is achieved. Uh, brake line, if it's got brake lines that are braided, I've got to meet the ADRs, Australian design rules, and that no steering components are cut, bent, heated, or welded, and that correct steering geometry and wheel alignment is achieved. So it's not going to go in with a bad wheel alignment, and there's no way in how long cutting steering components or modifying uh, butchering stuff on this. No, no, I don't buy that. So while it looks like a um, relatively big list there's nothing in there that's there's nothing in there that's too far out there um, it's almost like they were trying to find something to fill the page that's not the case but when considering the modifications to the car um, they've got things like a uh, the driver's side and internal rear vision mirrors have flat reflecting surface and the surface and if convex mirrors are fitted the radius of curvature is not less than 1.2 meters so have your factory mirrors in there uh, that all window glass fitted to the vehicle is safety glass and appropriately marked factory glass that the front rim screen does not have an optical transmission of less than 75% below the area swept by the windscreen wipers. Factory wipers, factory windscreen, it's a given. Uh, no sharp or dangerous projections exist on either the interior or exterior of the vehicle. Self-explanatory. Um, you have to have a permit when you take it in there. Uh, vehicle's exhaust does not exceed 96 decibels. Front and rear wheel track is approved by vehicle standards at the time of inspection. So I've got a narrow diff 
um, and I've got fat wheels and tyres. We did measure that with Sot and he was cool with that, he didn't say anything otherwise. Uh, the front wheels, it does have a hoppers stoppers brake kit on it and it does just come within the track. Um, big note here, if when you take it down for these inspections you have to be able to take the wheels off the car um, in front of the guys down at the testing station you have to provide the jack, the gear you have to pull the wheels off so they can measure it and you put the wheels back on uh, if the fuel tank is filled from inside the boot area that the boot area is fully sealed from the cabin of the vehicle and any electrical sources in the boot area now I've got a fuel cell in the car it's currently filled from in the boot if I left it like that, I have to put a bulkhead or a firewall um, behind the back seat, but I also have to seal every little crevice, little nook up in the um, inside the seat pillar. And in this car, that's a hard task. There's stuff everywhere and through here. I, I was sort of worried about that, but If I use the factory filler to that fuel cell, you don't have to seal any of that off. That negates all that um, stuff. I do have a firewall in there, but it's only behind the back seat. Uh, where are we up to? No fuel pumps or filters in the boot area. Um, that's obviously for fuel leaks, fumes inside the cab. Unless they are in a sealed compartment that is vented externally. All my stuff is under the car like I've got my big mechanical fuel pump under the boot I've got my um, electrical uh, primer fuel pump under the back of the car filters are under the car I've got a filter under here I've got filters under there everything's external so that's not a problem um, the rest is at least five working days prior to the inspection of the vehicle and engineering submission prepared by a chartered, prof chartered professional engineer that you saw is submitted addressing all items of the modification including results of testing in accordance with fact sheet MR807 lane change test procedures brake system test procedures results of testing torsional rigidity and beaming stiffness test procedures details of the maximum power and torque output of the engine measured not estimated so that's the dyno sheet uh, the maximum powered and geared speed of the vehicle with reference to item D, which is the maximum power and torque. Um, minimum suspension eyebrow heights and details of the fitting of fully floating hubs, including front and rear tyres specified as being suitable for the vehicle. This must include tyres, tyre speed and load rating of the tyres and the diameter with an offset of the rims. Please excuse all the talking, but it's, there's pretty much no choice with this video. Um, prior to the roadworthiness inspection being undertaken, an inspection of the vehicle must be undertaken by the vehicle identification section of Department of Transport Planning Infrastructure. Uh, so it's got to go through for a numbers check to make sure the car's not stolen or basically it's not stolen. Um, So that's it. That's that's all they've put. So it's like they've got the major modifications in there, namely the suspension modifications. So um, track width is a big one. Um, noise, general roadworthiness. Um, but in line with the um, in line with the lack of power to weight ratio rules in South Australia. They haven't really said anything about the power apart from they want a dyno sheet. Um, that matches, um, that comes into play with your torsional rigidity. So the strength of the car, the braking and everything, that all is all in line with the car. So, um, but the more horsepower you have, the safer the car's gotta be. I'm gonna double check that but I think that's pretty much right. Um, but the big thing is 
braking as well, braking and torsional rigidity. Other than that, those are the big items. They've basically padded out the um, the list with um, roadworthiness, like the uh, one about the windscreen. But it's all self-explanatory stuff. Explanatory stuff. Um, the lights working how they should, the eyebrow height so the lights are adjusted correctly, uh, handbrake. Now when this car was, when I put this diff in the car five, six years ago, I had, I put wheel, wheelwood brakes on it. Um, I didn't have a handbrake cable to suit and it's just been sort of pushed aside. Um, around here I think you can read that wood handbrake cable that's been sitting there for about a year or two maybe so like I said earlier in the last video this has kicked my ass into getting in everything sorted in the car which is a bonus it needs a handbrake every car needs a handbrake so that's the that's the list from the Department of Planning, Transport and Infrastructure. We'll put that one aside for now.